A debate is raging in medical circles about the causes of heart disease. An article published in the British Medical Journal by a cardiologist states that the risk from saturated fat is being overstated and demonised. This assertion is backed up by other prominent cardiologists who appeared on the ABC's program Catalyst this week. For the last four decades, dietary fat and cholesterol have been the villains in heart disease. You very seldom see the word saturated fat in the public press when they're not associated with artery clogging. So it's, it's like it's all one term, artery clogging saturated fats. But now some medical experts are coming forward to challenge this medical paradigm. I think it's a huge misconception that saturated fat and cholesterol are the demons in the diet. And it is 100% wrong. Saturated fat has been vilified for years because of the cholesterol theory. Well, that's what appeared on Catalyst this past week. Now, to explore the link between saturated fat and heart disease further, the National Heart Foundation Chief Executive, Dr Lynn Roberts, joins us from Melbourne. Dr Roberts, thanks very much for, uh, for taking the time out. Now, a number of cardiologists are uh, adding voices to the call to bust the so-called myth of the role of saturated fat in heart disease. Are you still confident that saturated fat is still the number one culprit? We at the Heart Foundation strongly believe that there's very good evidence from right around the world that shows that saturated fat plays a role in uh, raising blood cholesterol and of course high blood cholesterol is a risk factor for heart disease. You say there's very good evidence, but of course there is conflicting data, isn't there, which has led to uncertainty about the causes of heart disease. Look, I think there is a lot of evidence that's actually out there, and I was very interested that the Catalyst program actually selected uh, several people from the US to put forward an alternative view. From the Heart Foundation's perspective, um, the people that came forward really, I think we're expressing an opinion around the evidence, whereas I think if you actually look at what's been published in the scientific literature, in the sort of, you know, highly regarded journals right across the world, I think there is compelling evidence. So you maintain that uh, fat and moreover cholesterol is your number one enemy as far as uh, fighting heart disease is concerned? I think it's important to put it into a context because there's a number of risk factors for heart disease and it's not as simple as saying for all of us that there's just one risk factor. There's obviously high blood cholesterol plays a role but then there's blood pressure, then there's your family history. It depends on whether you're physically active or not and smoking and of course overweight and obesity in more recent years has also a challenge and a risk factor for heart disease. So well, it is a complex area. You mentioned obesity and a, a study this week in fact uh, uh, reiterated just how much of a problem that is in the Australian community. Is obesity not the real culprit? in heart disease? Look, I think we are very concerned at the rising rates of overweight and obesity because we do know that that often leads to diabetes and the two of those of course are important risk factors for heart disease as well. But if you look at really what's happened across the developed world over the last say 50 years we have seen heart disease rates actually drop in the developing world and that's been largely due to things that we've been able to do around encouraging behaviour change, getting people to be physically active, to change their diets, to quit smoking. We are of course now seeing overweight and obesity rising in our country as well as in um, developing countries and we're now seeing heart disease rates going, going up, particularly in those countries that are now struggling to both deal with what you might see as the you know, the infectious diseases problems as well as the lifestyle related problems like heart disease. Is it not the case though that this advice in a change of diets uh, has had uh, an effect that in fact obesity is increasing uh, because fats are being replaced by carbohydrates? I think when you look at overweight and obesity, there isn't a nutrition component to it. Of course there is in terms of really basic needs energy in and energy out. Now that energy can come from fats, it can come from carbohydrate, but there's another actually really important component that's often missed in this debate and that's the role of physical activity. I mean if you think about, well certainly when I grew up, I mean we were really quite physically active. We weren't a sedentary society. Now we actually have more and more people that are spending 
much of their time actually sitting at their desks, sitting at their computers, not being physically active. Our children are doing the same in terms of their environment at schools and also at home. So I think we, have a, we need a combined set of strategies to deal with overweight and obesity. It is about healthy eating and making sure that your serve sizes are appropriate and it's balancing that out with physical activity. I think everyone would agree that our, our sedentary lifestyle is obviously increasing the problem, but to, can the increase in obesity also uh, be linked to diet, as I said, because research from the ANU finds an increased uh, body mass index significantly increases the risk of heart disease. That's right, and I think you know, that's why we are concerned about overweight and obesity, as well as things like high blood cholesterol, high blood pressure. It really is about your absolute risk of getting heart disease, and there's a number of risk factors that people need to be aware of. So if people are concerned about their risk of heart disease, they really need to go and see their doctor and have a discussion and understand what their risk is and what they can actually do about improving their chances or reducing their risk, I suppose, of actually getting heart disease. Dr Roberts, do you feel as though this, this debate is uh is only just beginning that given there are so many cardiologists out there now questioning the theory and the the evidence and perhaps uh, much more needs to be done as far as uh, conclusive studies are concerned look i always think and the heart foundation um, is very committed to funding world-class research and so there's always an opportunity i think to do good research but there is overwhelming evidence now from studies from right across the world that show the risk factors and what they are and identifies, have identified them and show that link to heart disease. From the Heart Foundation's perspective, we believe that saturated fat does play a role in the diet in terms of increasing that chance of raising your blood cholesterol. But obviously there are you know, other things such as overweight and obesity that are also important. The message I think for all of us really is to eat very sensibly, to eat from a wide range of foods. We've got to bring it back to things I think that we can all do and that's looking at what a healthy diet is and just eating at a sensible level and really being very careful about that serve size because that is I suppose one of the things that the Heart Foundations we're very concerned about. If you look at serve size now in terms of if you just go and buy an ordinary sandwich these days it tends to be supersized. Dr Lynn Roberts from the National Heart Foundation, thanks very much. Thank you.